Now we're ready to discuss um, graphing polynomials, uh, since we've had a, a lesson on finding the zeros of them. Um, but before we actually get into graphing, uh, there's a couple characteristics we need to talk about uh, for polynomials. Um, first of all, uh, for all polynomials, the domain would be negative to positive infinity. Um, if you look at just any polynomial equation, um, there's no trouble whatsoever. Plug any x value in, it'll spit a y value out. Um, a few of the other characteristics um, that we need to mention before graphing um, would be the fact that polynomials are smooth and polynomials are continuous. Now, the smooth part means there are just no abrupt changes, so there won't be anything that looks like that. Uh, picture a graph that's nice, smooth, uh, oscillating up and down. Um, the continuous part means that you can graph a polynomial entirely without ever lifting your pencil off the paper. Um, so maybe something like this. Whereas your end behavior denotes it goes on forever and ever. You can see that it's smooth, no abrupt changes, and I graph the entire um, curve without ever lifting the pencil off the paper. So that being said, um, we're ready to move on now to graphing polynomials and, and outlining the three steps that will follow in this course. So the first step in graphing a polynomial uh, would be to find the zeros. Now remember, the zeros are the x-intercepts of the function, um, which is, is useful information in putting together a graph. Um, a few things that we can learn from the zeros. Um, in the last section, we talked about, uh, in the nth root theorem, the idea of multiplicity. When you find the zeros uh, of a polynomial, if a zero has even multiplicity, uh, we know that at that point, uh, the graph is going to bounce off of it. If we find that a, a, a zero has odd multiplicity, we could find out that it's going to cross at that value. So bouncing and crossing at the x-intercept. The second step uh, in graphing polynomials would be to identify the y-intercept. Uh, and if you'll remember to find a y-intercept, this is where we let x equal 0, and we solve for uh, y. The third step would be the leading coefficient test. So the leading coefficient test. The leading coefficient test is going to tell us where to put our pencil down and where to pick our pencil up. Now, there are four cases here, um, and if you just look at them um, as, as, a, as a general guideline, it's a bit overwhelming, but uh, if you really think about what it's being, what's being done, it's really not difficult to remember. So the things that we'll look at for the leading coefficient test will be the degree uh, and the leading coefficient itself. Um, if the degree is even and the leading coefficient is positive, we're going to have a certain uh, beginning and ending place for the graph. Um, if the degree is even and the leading coefficient is negative, um, we'll have something similar. So for these two cases, what I would always recommend is thinking of something easy that you already know. For example, when it comes to even and positive, we know that the polynomial y equals x squared has an even degree and a positive leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient test says in general that all of these graphs with even degrees and positive leading coefficients will start in quadrant 2 and finish in quadrant 1. Similarly, if we have an even degree and a negative leading coefficient, well, that's just uh, the parabola flipped upside down. So the leading coefficient test generalizes and says that they all start in quadrant 3 and finish in quadrant 4. So now, if we change this up a little bit, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and uh, erase the parts that I need to change. If we now have an odd degree and positive leading coefficient, or an odd degree and negative leading coefficient, uh, we can think of similar uh, ideas. So y equals maybe x cubed. We know that that would start in 3, finish in 1. So in general, for all polynomials that have odd degree and positive coefficients, it would start in 3, finish in 1. Uh, and then similarly, if we have negative x cubed, you could see that would be a reflection about the x-axis. So we would start in 2 and finish in 4. <clears throat> 
So the first graph that we'll look at, um, y equals 3 plus 3x minus x squared, um, we'll just follow those three steps and, and hopefully you'll see that uh, the process really isn't too bad. So the first step would be to find the zeros, which means that I need to take the original function, I need to set it equal to zero and solve it for x. Now, of course, I would try factoring traditionally. Now, it doesn't seem to work. We're dealing with a cubic function, so quadratic formula, completing the square, um, not ideal options. Um, so it looks like we're going to have to resort to uh, synthetic division. Um, so if I put together my list of possible rational zeros, I get a 1 and a 2, uh, of course, positive or negative. Um, and I'll just run through the list. Now, to save time, uh, I know that negative 1 is a solution. So if I take my coefficients, uh, decreasing sequentially, so I have a negative 1, a 0, a 3, and a 2, bring the negative 1 down and continue running through the synthetic division. And again, we find out that negative 1 works. Uh, now, we have a negative x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. I'll go ahead and multiply both sides by a negative so that it uh, is a little bit easier to look at. And then we can see that this factors into x minus 2, x plus 1, so that x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. Now, we can't forget about the negative 1 that worked up here as well. So the negative 1 actually has multiplicity of 2. Okay? So that's uh, finding the zeros. Um, the second step, finding the y-intercept, in this case, when we let x be 0, uh, it's pretty evident that if x is 0, the y-value would have to be 2. So we have a y-intercept of 0, 2. Uh, in the third step, the leading coefficient test, uh, we'll need to look at the degree of the polynomial. It's degree 3, so odd. And the leading coefficient uh, is negative. So... If you have an odd degree negative leading coefficient, in your mind, just think of a simple function. A negative odd degree, something like this, we know would start in 2 and finish in 4. So that's what our graph is going to do. Now, to put all this together, I'll go ahead and make sure the axes are labeled. Uh, we've got negative 1, and we've got a 2. Uh, the graph is going to start up here in quadrant uh, 2. We're going to come down and actually bounce off of negative 1. We're going to bounce off of it because of the even multiplicity. We're going to come down, we're going to bounce off of it, we're going to come back up, and we're going to cross through 2 because 2 has odd multiplicity. Put the arrows on the ends, come back and fill in the y-intercept, um, and you have your graph now of uh, the original function. All right, so in the next example, um, it's really going to be no different, um, but we do need to be a little more um, careful about uh, not overreacting to a problem like this. Um, in the first step of finding the zeros, um, we want to take the function and we want to set it equal to zero uh, like we've done every other time uh, in these types of problems where we're just trying to find the zeros. So once we set it equal to zero, um, the, the not overreacting comes from the fact that we don't want to multiply all this together. Um, remember, synthetic division, the whole idea behind it is to factor. Um, and fortunately, we're factored already. So we can take each one of these and individually set them equal to zero um, and then go ahead and solve uh, for um, the x's. So for example, um, this one would tell us that x equals 1. This one would tell us that x equals negative 2 with a multiplicity of 3 x equals 3 with multiplicity of 2, x equals negative 4, and x equals 5. So we've already found now all of the zeros uh, by simply understanding that it's already in its factored form. If we take each of these individual factors, set them equal to 0, and solve, we come up with the, the, the zeros that are, that are shown on the screen. Okay, the second step, the y-intercept, uh, this is one where now you're going to have to slow down a little bit as well. This is where we let x be 0. So when we do this now, we want to go nice and slow. We've got y equals, and when I plug a 0 into that first factor, I'm going to get a negative 1. 
a zero into the second factor, I'll get a two cubed. And continuing down the line, we end up with these numbers. So not quite as easy as the last one to compute, um, but just remember uh, to find the y-intercept, you let x be zero, um, and now we would multiply all this out. And in doing so, we end up with a positive 1,440. Um, so the actual y-intercept would be the point, zero, 14, 40. The third step uh, would be the leading coefficient test. And again, we would investigate the degree uh, and the leading coefficient itself. Um, the leading coefficient is pretty easy to see, uh, that the, it would be a positive quantity. Um, the degree might not be as easy to see. Uh, we certainly don't want to multiply all this stuff out. Um, but remember, we can, we can take advantage of the nth root theorem uh, from an earlier section. If we go back and just count up the number of solutions we have, so there would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 zeros, so therefore this had to have come from a degree 8 polynomial. Um, so 8 being even tells us that our graph would start in quadrant two and finish in quadrant one. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this together. Now it looks like I have a lot of uh, x-intercepts, so I'll make the x-axis a little bit longer here. Um, we've got a negative four, we've got a negative two, we've got a one, a three, and a five. So there's a one, a three and a five. All right, so uh, looks like we're going to be crossing through all of them except the three. The three is going to bounce. Um, another thing that I'll mention here briefly is that notice how the multiplicity for the negative two is multiplicity of three. Um, that's a higher multiplicity than 1, which would suggest that, that something's got to be a little bit different. So you'll notice as I draw this and I cut through negative 2 uh, that I'm coming through it a little bit of more of a shallow approach. So let me go ahead and sketch this in here. We're going to start up in 2. We're going to come through. We're going to cross negative 4. We're going to flatten out and be a little more shallow uh, at negative 2. Um, coming up pretty high there, coming back through the 1, bouncing off the 3, and crossing through the 5. You can see my y-intercept would be at the 1440. Uh, and there's a 1 in there, covered that up. Uh, so I think, uh, I think we're good to go. So we start in, in 2, cross through negative 4, cut through negative 2 at a little more shallow uh, approach. Y-intercept is positive 1440, that checks out. Cross through 1, bounce at 3, and then cross back through 5, ending uh, where we should.